trip um, to Canada, New York and Iceland coming up. I wanted uh, a device to store photos and videos on. Um, I'm not taking my MacBook Pro with me because it's a 15 inch model and it's just too big and heavy to go in my rucksack that I want to take. So I decided to buy myself a 11 inch MacBook Air, uh, which is great. Um, it's perfect, it fits in my bag perfectly, it's light, it has great battery life. Um, the only thing that has a bit of a downside to it is that it's limited on space. Uh, it's got 128 gig hard drive inside it. So by the time I start filling that up with video and pictures, it ain't going to last long, especially because we're away for nearly three weeks and I'm going to take a lot of video and pictures. So obviously the next thing is a portable hard drive. Got plenty of those. Got, uh, I think this one's one terabyte. You have. I got a bit addicted to wrapping stuff, as you can tell. So there is a video, <laughs> it will be in the link below. Uh, so yeah, got one terabyte. I don't, I think it's a Toshiba, that one. Got another one here, which is one terabyte. That's the Western Digital My Passport Ultra. My first ever portable hard drive. This is a 330 gig Toshiba. Um, you can tell how old it is because it hasn't got a micro USB. It's got the original one. Um, all of them work fine. Uh, I, I do worry because at the end of the day they are hard drives and I did get a fault with the, the Toshiba one a few months ago. I didn't lose any data, but it was just, it didn't sound right. So what I did was I went out and decided to make my own um, SSD hard drive. So I bought the enclosure off of eBay or Amazon, it's like a fiver. I then went out and bought a King Dian solid state drive, which I think this is a 480 gig cost me about £35, £40. So for less than £50, I had a 480 gig SSD, um, which I can and I do use to edit 4K footage off in Final Cut Pro. Those hard drives aren't quick enough. You can get away with 1080p at 30 frames a second, but on this, it um, works really well. I uh, love this, it's a great idea. problem I have is, MacBook Air, does, the 11 inch version, doesn't have an SD card slot. All of my cameras run off SD cards and I can't be bothered to use a little dongle. So if I want to get footage off my camera I'd have to take the SD card out, plug it into a dongle, plug a hard drive into this and copy all the stuff over. What I was looking for was a different solution. I found it. It's the Asus Travel Air N wireless hard drive and SD card reader. Um, when I first started looking at these, I thought it was a bit too much money for what it was until I did a bit of shopping around. At the moment, on what day is it? 16th of February 2019, this hard drive on Amazon is £116.80, which I thought was a bit expensive. It's a one terabyte hard drive, so we're not talking a stupid amount of space, but we're talking enough. Um, but if you go on to www.scan.co.uk, you can get the same hard drive, brand new, for £53. Um, I've used Scan before, I bought my drone off there, my Mavic Pro, so it's not a dodgy website. Um, got delivered pretty much next day. Free delivery, I think it was, well, no, £5.48 £5 delivery, or you can collect it in their Bolton store for free. So yeah, uh, what we're we'll doing is I'm going to do a quick, quick unboxing. I have used it. Um, I did get, a, I did cover it with my red carbon vinyl because I'm sad. Um, but the features on this are good. They could be implemented a better way, but for what I need, it works. And I didn't want to end up taking loads of hard drives. I just wanted to take one device with me. So here's what's in the box. Way. Okay, right, so the box comes quite neatly packaged. 
as you can see I've already covered it in my vinyl my main reason for covering it in the vinyl is that it had like a glossy black finish on the top and I did chuck it in my bag once with what did I have in there I think I had a GoPro in the same pocket but it has scratched the top up a little bit and it's an absolute fingerprint magnet so what I decided was to sack that off cover it in my red vinyl um, and it matches my other bits and bobs right so back to the unboxing in the box you also do get the cable which I forgot to put back in when I was repackaging it oddly and this is the only downside I ordered this off of a UK website but it decided to come with I don't know what country that's for I think it's Europe I think it's a European power brick um, you're asking why a portable hard drive comes with a USB power brick it's because this hard drive has its own battery built in uh, 3300 milliamp battery because it also emits a Wi-Fi signal that connects without the need for a cable it's not the fastest connection but that does mean you don't need to connect it to a computer you can connect to it via your phone so what we do is we'll do a bit of a test in a minute on that so yeah it is it's heavy um it's not the lightest hard drive i just want to sack that box off comparing it to let's just say the western digital as you can see size difference is quite big uh thickness is probably the biggest one so for the space of my ssd and my western digital it's about the same height as two hard drives but what it does do um has wi-fi signal so you don't have to connect it via a cable um, it does have USB 3, so when you do connect it by a cable, it's quite fast. Um, has a SD card slot on the side, as you can see just there. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like it. The, there's a couple of small downsides. It's not the fastest over Wi-Fi. Um, when you plug your SD card into it, I would like to be able to plug my SD card into it, push a button on the side or it automatically know and it just backs up all of my hard my hard SD card to the hard drive. At the moment you have to turn it on, wait for the Wi-Fi signal to come on, connect to your phone, plug the SD card into it, and then you hit a button on the side on the app that says back up now and then it just takes everything off the SD card and puts it into a folder on the hard drive. Which is perfect, which is exactly what I want. And then you can delete all the footage off your SD card and start again. Which means everything's already transferred for here when you want to edit or uh, upload. So it is a great idea, uh, but what I do is now, we're going to do a couple of speed tests. Um, first of all via USB 3 on the Mac. I'm going to show you what it's like in the app. I'll do a bit of a screen record on there. Um, but yeah, like I say, for £53 for a terabyte of hard drive space, USB 3, it's got an NFC card reader as well, so if your phone does support it, if you're on Android, to connect, all you do is tap your phone. Um, Apple don't support that, but connect, connecting was a bit of a headache. I think it was down to me, though. I did not read the user manual. Uh, I like to think that I know how things work before I buy them, so I do quite a lot of research. There isn't too much of this on the internet. Um, so hopefully this video will help anyone who buys this in the future. Right, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the device on. Turn it on is quite easy. Just push and hold that button on the side until there's a very faint, and I don't like the idea of how faint that is, little light there that's flashing. And then in a second, the blue light above it will start to flash. So the hard drive's wearing up. I can feel it in my hands. I just wish I could take this apart and put an SSD in it. I think that would improve it. Um, so as you can see there, now we've got the blue light there flashing. That's telling me there's a Wi-Fi signal. So what we do is go into the phone. What we do is we're going to do a screen record on here. Okay, right, so there we are. So we're going to the so connect to it via Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hard drive. I've named that myself, you can change that. It does have like a code of the actual thing. So go to Asus Drive, hit the button up here, and as you can see, down the bottom, we're a 99% battery, 
We've got 882 gigs of space left and it hasn't seen that there's a card in there because we haven't put one in there. But then you go into your files, there's your hard drive. So I backed up my SD card from that camera uh, yesterday I believe it was. It's not the fastest process but what you can do is whack your SD card in it whilst you're sitting down having a coffee or waiting for a bus or on a plane or something like that. So we go into it. And it back, I think it backed up nearly like 100 gigs of data, 100 gigs, how many gigs? Yeah, it's about 100 gigs of data, I think it was, because it was 128 card. So I think it was about 25 minutes. I say it's not the fastest. I can't imagine that the SD card slot in it is the fastest one, but what it does do is stops the need for getting a laptop out and plugging everything in and using dongles and stuff like that. So as you can see, the app's, the app's not the best app. Um, let's find a picture worth looking at. So you can flow quite through. You can, let's say if we select that one. Okay, that's when we were out the other day. It's just a random shot from the, in the app. See that, that's it downloading. So it's not the fastest of connections, but what it does allow you to do is work on one-off shots when you're out and about. So that is now downloaded to my phone, so I can save the image, I can go through and share it straight away, which is quite nice. Um, which I'm not going to bother saving it because it's not the best of images. So as you can see, like the app's not great because it's not letting me do anything with it. Right, save the image just to get out of that. But like once once it loads the thumbnails, Once it loads the thumbnails, it is a lot quicker to use. So there we go, straight away. I uploaded this, or backed up this SD card yesterday, so I've not been into it since. So loading up the thumbnails will take a bit of time. So there is a couple on here already that I've done. So yeah, look, the Wi-Fi side, it's not the best, but what it does do is let you work without the need for a computer. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to take the SD card out of my Nikon D3400 and I'm going to plug that in to the SD card slot. So you have to give it a second. It's not the quickest process, but what I would, what I would love, I want to be able to plug the SD card in and then have a button on the side saying, back up and then it does the rest. I don't want to have to get my phone out every time, which is what I'm going to have to do. So there it says SD card found. It now tells me that 7.6% of the space is taken up. And there's 26 gigs worth available left. But again, then you can go into the SD card on the, on the drive, or through the drive, which again, it's great. Um, you can do all the same thing on the Mac as well. You don't have to have an app. You just connect to a remote server, um, which I'll show you in a minute. There's a little bit of, um, there's an IP address you have to type in. But then it works as if it's a network drive. But again, it's not the fastest, but it works. So if we just open up one of these pictures on my phone, that was taken for, a video, for one of my earlier videos with the Yanogo lens. So let's download it. Uh, it's not the fastest, but it works. I'm actually beginning to hate myself for saying that. I've said it that much. So then we can save the image. And now that is in our library for us to do whatever we want with. So then to back up, I'm just come all the way back out of this. You go into here, back up. Ask you what you want to back up. Your contacts, your SD card or your albums from your phone. Click SD card. Start back up, backs up the first partition only, which is fine because I've only got one partition on here. 
See, the app's not great. It works sometimes. So rid of the app, start again. Okay, right. So it's SD card found, fine. Back up. SD card, start back up. First partition only. There we go. So as you can see, this isn't the fastest process, but there's a little blue bar that will come across the top of the screen here. Um, the SD cards that I've got aren't exactly slow, um, so it's not the SD card, it's the, it must be the reader inside the hard drive. With the SD card slot, you can't plug it into, sorry, if the, S, if the hard drive's plugged in via cable to your computer, it's a USB 3 hard drive, just like normal. You cannot use the SD card slot whilst it's plugged in. So what you are better off doing is just transferring everything over like I'm doing now. And then having it, viewing it through the actual backup folder on there. So as you can see, look, let's just move that up close to you. There's a little blue line at the top. It's not the fastest process, but you don't have to have your phone on for it to work. So once it's started, as long as you keep that connected to that, it'll be fine. So it will back up and it is backing up as we speak. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the process of this working with my Mac. So I'm going to stop that. So as you can see, whilst it's going, it's whilst my phone's off, it's still going in the background. Actually, one thing I did forget, just quickly, is obviously when you're connected to this hard drive on your computer, you're not connected to the internet. But what this allows to do is the hard drive will connect to your Wi-Fi, and then you can connect to the hard drive so you can still get internet signal. It's not the fastest connection, like I've got 100 meg broadband here, uh, but it takes me down to about 20, so it's not very fast, but it still allows you to browse and do stuff. So that's quite actually an important thing for me. Um, I think you have to do it, you have to connect to every Wi-Fi that you're on. It doesn't just automatically do it, you have to go into the app and say connect to the Wi-Fi. But it is another thing that allows you to continue to work whilst it's working as a hard drive. But what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect it to my Mac and we'll try it on there. Okay, right, so when I turned this on earlier to connect it to uh, my phone, it instantly connected to my Mac um, because I've connected it before, um, but what it still has done is it's got the Wi-Fi pass through to my main Wi-Fi, so I'm, I'm on the internet. I'm, do like said, I'm doing a screen record, which I'll flick up now. Let's say if we're going to Finder, it's not there. This hashtag web is the little USB stick I have on the side. So, what you have to do is you go to go, up to connect server, and that's what you need. SMB colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.96.98. And once you connect, say so connecting and connecting and connecting, it gives you two options. It gives you the hard drive and it gives you the SD card. So what we can do is we go into the hard drive, connect into it. So now we're wirelessly connected to the hard drive. But again, we can go into the backup. As you can see, it's not the fastest. Like that's the one we backed up a minute ago. I stopped it early, so there's not going to be. I don't think all the files are in there. Should be some. There we go. So we've got some, <clears throat> it's not brilliant, but what it does, it allows you to work without wires. You can have this in your bag on and connect to it, either your phone or via your, your, your computer. As you can see, it works all right. All you have to do though is go into Go, go to Connect Server, and then type in that. Uh, IP address. Um, to get back into the SD card, so you have to do the same thing, connect to server, same one again, reconnect, 
and that gives because we're already connected to the hard drive you have to then click the SD card so click SD card and then this is our SD card that's plugged into the side of it not the fastest process there we go so what it is I'm going to copy I find a pretty big file. So that one. So that's a. Actually, that was a big one. So it's, this one's a 15 meg file. Just make sure it's all right. There we go. So 15 megs. I copy that to my desktop. It's not too bad. I, I, it's workable. It's definitely workable. Now that's on my desktop. It's fine. So what I'm now I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off and then plug it in um, via USB 3 to do a bit of a speed check. Now, I'm not sure if I can do the speed check on a network drive. Let's have a look. So it's connecting, give it a second. Oh I can, let's have a look to see what the actual speed test is. I can't imagine it's going to be anything great. 2.6 megs a second on the right speed. Yeah, 2.6, it's not much at all. 3.9, 4.0 on the read. Um, so yeah, it's not good enough to do any editing off wirelessly but it will do as a backup storage, which is great. So what I'll do is now I'm going to turn it off, because if it's on, it won't connect to your computer via cable. So you have to hold the button until the little light flashes, which it's doing now. There we go, it felt the hard drive well down. I say once, when it's plugged in, you can't use the SD card slot. You can do it wirelessly, but you can't do it whilst it's plugged in. So. I don't like these little flat bits though. They feel like they're not going to last very long, so I actually might just cut them off. It, they have classed this as dust proof and um, splash proof as well, So, but I can't imagine I'm ever going to use it in a place because I'd have to get my computer out or my phone out, and I'm not, I'm not really interested. So, what we do is wait for it to boot up. There we go. I've named it Wi Fi hard drive. And now it just works as if it's a normal hard drive. But as you can see, it's a lot quicker. Where's that 15 meg file? Let's rename that, put one on the end. Oh, it's gone like that. So that was a bit stupid, wasn't it? There we go. So same file, copy over, and it's there compared to how slow that one went. I say it wasn't too slow, but it works. So what I'm gonna do now is do a speed test. Okay, select target device, Wi-Fi, open, start. So now that's 82, 83 megabytes a second on the, on the right speed. And that's 100 and well, flashed up to 102. It's gone down to 90, 85 meg on the read. So again, that's enough to edit 1080p at 60 frames a second. Um, not quite 2.7k or 4k. Oh, so it's 95 on the read, 85 on the right, 95 on the read. Um, but yeah, as a normal hard drive, it works fine. Um, like I say, you can't use the SD card slot as uh, when it's plugged into the hard drive. But as a speed test comparison, so we take that one off. If I plug in my SSD, which is the one I made myself. So this is the one I do all my editing off. So speed test, select target. 
uh, workflow speed test 406 gigs uh, sorry gigs 405 megabytes on the write speed 410 on the read it's gone up to 413 on the write now 413 on the read so that is good enough to edit whatever you want really so that's what I do because it's not a massive hasn't got a massive amount of storage once you start putting libraries together on Final Cut Pro you soon run out I've had so many times mid edit it will say too big so I have to clear stuff off of it whilst or before I can do any further works um, so yeah it, like, I would I would improve this by being able to just plug an SD card in it knows and it just transfers everything over already without having to get my app out or the laptop out to do so uh, I'd be more impressed it had, if it had an SSD in it um, just because then I wouldn't need the need for my other one uh, the weight of it's alright it is big um, but it does have battery it has Wi-Fi um, so it does have everything I need so when I go away I will only be taking this with me um, I won't generally do any editing I'll do it when I come back um, so yeah definitely recommend it but shop around for the price because otherwise you will be paying over £100 for something you could get for £50 I haven't seen them second hand I wouldn't recommend buying a hard drive second hand anyway because you don't know what has happened to it or how much it's been used but yeah definitely worth having a look um, it will be coming on our trip to Vancouver, Toronto, Calgary, New York and Reykjavik which is happening in a couple of weeks so yeah definitely recommend it guys just make sure you shop around thanks very much